tonight on Dispatches, as the annual Easter indulgence approaches, we ask what's going on with our favourite chocolate, Cadbury. They're not as creamy as what they used to be. They're a lot more sugary. Did you enjoy it then? <laughs> it was lovely. I haven't noticed the difference, to be honest with you. <laughs> Has the new management tampered with our cherished chocolates? Cadbury's was a pretty special company. There was this spirit of Willy Wonka around it, and I think Kraft are very much about the bottom line. And just how fair trade is your fair trade dairy milk? So it's possible to buy a bar of chocolate and it says fair trade, but there's no actual fair trade cocoa in that specific bar of chocolate. Yes, that's possible. And how many of the British bars we love are manufactured on the continent? Six years after Kraft Foods bought our favourite chocolate company, Dispatches takes a bite out of Cadbury to see if life is sweet. Britain loves its chocolate. And our chocolate of choice is Cadbury. We have a long and enduring love affair with a company that began nearly 200 years ago. The thing about Cadbury is it's not just another brand. It's part of our childhoods. It's woven into our memories. It's a treat after a hard day at work. OK, we all know it's full of fat and sugar and it's not good for us. But Cadbury is a brand that many of us feel passionately about. A finger of fudge is just enough to give your kids a treat. A finger of fudge... We grew up with Cadbury's sweet, sweet advertising. Classic Cadbury's adverts like this one transport us back to our British childhood. The catchy jingles stick in our head. A finger of fudge is just enough to give your kids a treat. And there's always been a feel-good factor about the company. The early chocolate pioneers were Quakers, and their religious values really unified every aspect of their lives. So the business, in their eyes, really was something that should be used as a powerful force for the good. Those caring Quaker values are celebrated in this lush 1953 Cadbury film about life in the factory, in the garden. The time when factory relationships become personal relationships. Deborah Cadbury wrote a history of her family's company and its unique ethos. It was important to them that everything was worked out that would work for long-term benefits for the whole community. Everything that was done was done so that people could really build up their security and build up their futures. We loved Cadbury for being the good company that made great chocolate. But in recent times, it's not all been sweetness and light. Last year, there were alarming reports that they'd altered the chocolate in their famous cream eggs. Can a nation of Cadbury's connoisseurs taste the difference? It's amazing. <laughs> Why is it amazing? Um, because you know what it's going to taste like when you bite into it, and it's just amazing. They're not as creamy as what they used to be. They're a lot more sugary. Can you tell the difference between that and cream eggs you might have had in the past? Not really, no. No? No. It's lovely, but the chocolate doesn't have the creamy taste. It's got more, more milk in it. I think it's watered down. This one's more like Easter egg chocolate, Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's it. Easter egg chocolate, that tastes like. Mm -hmm. Do you know what? It tastes a lot nicer than it did when I was young. Cadbury say they've changed the cream egg chocolate back to the original 1971 recipe. But it's not just the Easter favourite. The chunks of dairy milk pieces are now rounded off. Sultanas sit alongside raisins in your fruit and nut. And you don't get as many roses or heroes per box. But the prices have stayed the same. Cadbury say, as with other chocolate manufacturers, it's the cost of commodities, a response to new trends, consumer demand, and to ensure the highest quality and consistency. And they just give a recommended price. <laughs> So what's going on behind that much-loved swirling signature? Stay British, keep our shop, keep our... Well, six years ago, Cadbury was sold. I mean, it's just a sad day. After a very public and very controversial takeover battle, Kraft, the second biggest food company in the world, 
took control of Cadbury. Senior employees here have told Channel 4 News that they are shell-shocked today. It was a very controversial takeover. Many people saw Cadbury as a very well-run company that had been performing well. It had been delivering good returns. Kraft was a big, slow-growth conglomerate which tended to buy and sell things. So it wasn't really clear what the benefit to Cadbury of the takeover was. It was clear what the benefit of Cadbury was to, to Kraft. Cadbury could deliver growth to it. In taking over Cadbury, Kraft acquired a century of famous British brands, processing and research centres and two chocolate factories, one of which was the spiritual home of Cadbury, the Bourneville factory on the outskirts of Birmingham. Before and after the battle for Bourneville, Kraft made a series of public pledges and promises, not least to Parliament. So, six years after the takeover, let's open our specially created box of Cadbury promises and see if they are still as sweet now as they were back then. And let's start with a classic, the chocolate worker. In their official takeover submission, Kraft said that they believed they would be in a position to continue to operate the Summerdale facility. Summerdale was the unglamorous factory where they produced the glamorous Cadbury's flake made memorable by hungry ladies in the bath. Cadbury had planned to close down the site, but Kraft stated their sincere belief that they could keep it open, which filled workers with renewed hope. The crumbliest, flakiest milk chocolate in the world. But just one week after they took control of Cadbury, Kraft reneged on this promise. Summerdale was marked for closure. 75 years of chocolate making came to an end, and 400 workers lost their jobs. The incensed prospective MP complained to the takeover panel. As soon as they bought the company, they turned around and said, actually, no, the closure panel's too far advanced and we're going to go ahead anyway. And I think that was a particularly nasty double blow to people who'd had their hopes lifted. The takeover panel accepted that Kraft held an honest and genuine belief that it could keep Summerdale operational, but that it was not a belief they had a reasonable basis for holding. They concluded Kraft fell below the standard required. A parliamentary select committee later found Kraft had acted both irresponsibly and unwisely over the statement. The committee made repeated requests for Kraft Chief Exec Irene Rosenfeld to attend a parliamentary hearing, but she refused to come. As one of the committee members put it, Kraft are essentially saying, bugger off. I think their promises are worth even less than politicians' promises, and that's quite saying something. And closing the Summerdale factory was just the beginning. It is estimated that Kraft, who also owned Jelly Babies, cut 700 UK jobs in total. Some of those jobs went overseas, which leads us to dip into our Cadbury promises once again. So let's try the Swiss switch. Six years ago, Kraft publicly promised the UK Parliament that they'd manage Cadbury from within the UK. The brands and the assets and the people will be managed out of the UK. Hmm. Hard to swallow. Working for Cadbury at the time of the takeover was the man who commissioned Cadbury's most memorable advert. The advert timed its moment perfectly, but according to the head of marketing, Kraft's timing was way off. On the very first day that Kraft took control of the business, the leadership team from Europe came to, to the Cadbury head office and to the UK office, and pretty much from that first day, they made it clear that they were going to run the business out of Switzerland. There was no debate about it. I would have had to move to Switzerland to stay with the company, and I decided for, for both personal and professional reasons I didn't want to do that. Cadbury already had one of its many worldwide offices in Zurich, but now the UK company answered to the Swiss HQ. Many of the big decisions about Cadbury's future are not made here, but are now made in Switzerland. And one decision was to bundle all Kraft's confectionery business together in a new company called Mondelez. 
and Mondelez management wasn't the only thing that went overseas. I'm on my way to find the home of the Crunchy, invented by Fry's in 1929. The double-decker, modelled on a London bus. The curly-whirly, that ultimate 1970s creation fashioned from leftover toffee. This is a pilgrimage to the home of the chomp, fingers of fudge and the picnic. And all these magical, iconic British bars of fun are made here. This is Skarby Mish in rural Poland. Rural it might be, but we're a long way from the Cadbury brothers' dream of a factory in a garden. It's one of seven Mondelez factories in Poland. Some of the agency workers employed here get paid 13 schlotties an hour. That's about £2.35, just over the Polish minimum wage. I've been to lots of food factories, but I have never seen one nearly as big as this. For over 20 years prior to the takeover, Cadbury had a production base in Poland. The move to Eastern Europe dramatically reduces costs. But for British customers, this feels bittersweet. Cadbury has always flaunted its Britishness as a selling point. I picked up this union flag for Stoon Dairy Milk at Duty Free. But if you turn over the patriotic front, oh, complete with royal warrant, and you examine the small print on the back, it says, made in Poland. And it's not only the one with the union flag on the front and Poland on the back. Dispatches has discovered that these dairy milk bars, including the 95 calorie dairy milk, are all made in Poland. In fact, these Mondelez publicity photographs proudly display the Scarby Mish factory wares for all to see. But hang on a minute. Here's what Kraft said to Parliament. Will Cabra's dairy milk continue to be produced in the UK? Yes, yes. It will. For how long? For as long as our consumers are delighted by the taste and the product that we produce. <laughs> Despite such sugary reassurances, these dairy milk bars, sold in British shops, are produced in Poland. It's a familiar pattern. British chocolate lovers may recall that in 1993, Kraft bought Terry's Chocolate Factory in York, and 12 years later, they abandoned the historic site and shifted production of the famous chocolate orange to, amongst other places, Poland. The almost unthinkable idea that this flagship bar could be made more cheaply in Poland must make the workers of Bourneville shudder when they contemplate their future. After all, nothing is sacred. This, Bourneville, named after the original factory in Birmingham, it's no longer made in Bourneville. Chock horror. It's been made in France for years, even before the takeover. Since 1879, the Bourneville factory has been famous for improving the lives of its employees, with an emphasis on long-term well-being and job security. But we've discovered Mondelez take on agency workers on zero-hours contracts. Mondelez say they don't directly employ anyone on zero-hours contracts. Only a handful of agency workers are currently hired like this. They have the same paying conditions as full Mondelez employees. The company has been keen to impress upon all their Bourneville employees that they must prepare themselves for a different working style. <coughs> this document, sent to staff, is entitled, charmingly, High Performing Bourneville. Is this for me? Well, on the first page, it says to workers, in capital letters, if we don't change, we will see a potential decline of local employment opportunities for future generations i.e. your family and friends. Volume could possibly go to other sites within the Mondelez chocolate category. We will be unable to grow and develop our workforce to succeed to be the very best and therefore fail to become the supplier of choice. With the suggestion of jobs going abroad, the document then outlines the ways in which staff are expected to change and includes an employee questionnaire. OK, let's see. Do you want to work in a factory that continuously looks forward, not backwards, at the past? Yes, no, 
Maybe. Um, I'm going to say yes to that one. Do you want to work in a factory where you're expected to be flexible? The hours, shift, you work. Oh, gosh. I think I might say maybe to that one. I don't know. This feels a little heavy-handed. Mondelez told us we are passionate about our commitment to Cadbury's heritage, people, and importantly, its future. We have invested over £200 million into UK manufacturing, research and invention. The high-performing Bourneville document was written by the local Bourneville factory team, who consulted the Unite Union throughout to ensure that the factory could modernise working practices, catch up with other modern UK manufacturers and secure a long-term future. Bourneville is still absolutely the home and heart of Cadbury, and it will continue to be so. All the classic Cadbury dairy milk bars are manufactured here, except for the small 95 calorie bar. Mondelez clarified that the large bar with the Union Jack is not part of the classic range. Coming up after the break, what fair trade dairy milk really means, and the sweet nothings that Cadbury whispers to the tax man. Six years after Kraft took them over, Dispatches is trying to get a true flavour of Cadbury. And we've been tasting and testing a choice selection of the promises they offered. Mmm, let's try this creme de la creme R&D centre. Kraft Mondelez did promise to invest in the research and development facilities here at the factory in Bourneville, and they delivered on that promise. Jobs have been created. Mmm, that's pretty tasty. Mondelez have invested £75 million in a new production line at Bourneville. They can produce 1.2 million cream eggs in 24 hours. Bourneville is now the global headquarters for chocolate invention. Their corporate video proudly showcases their R&D lab, where Mondelez say the number of inventors has gone from 25 to 250. Inventing new chocolate bars has to be most people's idea of a dream job. So what are some of the choice treats the Cadbury Oompa Loompas have confected for us? So here's a dairy milk made with salty Ritz crackers. Ritz crackers are made by Mondelez. There's dairy milk with Chips Ahoy. Chips Ahoy, a Mondelez product. Here's dairy milk with Oreo biscuits. Oreo biscuits, one of Mondelez's main biscuits. And then there's dairy milk with Lou biscuits. You've heard of Lou, right? Hmm, made by Mondelez. There's a Cadbury Dairy Milk with Dime Bar. Yes, once again, Dime Bar, you've guessed it, it's a Mondelez product. I think what they've done with the Cadbury Dairy Milk brand post the takeover is indicative of they see that as a product first, an ingredient rather than a brand. So the way they've combined it with other products and other brands that in the Cadbury day would never have happened. The stewardship of the Dairy Milk brand may upset Cadbury's traditionalists. But for centuries, Cadbury was about the mission as much as the merchandise. One of the last acts of the company pre-takeover was to convert dairy milk to a fair trade brand. This was a huge pioneering commitment, a big, bold statement that Cadbury was an ethical company and would make a stand in the notoriously exploitative cocoa industry. In charge at the time was CEO Todd Stitzer, who explained his aims in this enlightening Global Poverty Project video. It came uh, the idea that it would be great uh, to be the very first mass market chocolate bar that was fair trade. For Cadbury's to convert Cadbury's dairy milk to fair trade is a really big deal because it means that consumers in Britain who wanted to have fair trade products now could buy them absolutely everywhere. But it also made a huge deal to the farmers. One of the reasons the big companies originally couldn't convert was because there wasn't enough fair trade cocoa for them to convert. So what does fair trade actually mean when it's written on the front of a bar of chocolate? Dairy milk bars that are certified are approved on what fair trade calls the mass balance system. What that means is that for every bar of dairy milk Cadbury make, they need to prove they've bought a corresponding amount of fair trade cocoa. 
But surprisingly, that doesn't guarantee that the actual cocoa that's used to make your bar of dairy milk will always be fair trade. So it's possible to buy a bar of chocolate from a big manufacturer, such as Cadbury, and it says fair trade, but there's no actual fair trade cocoa in that specific bar of chocolate. Yes, it, that's possible. Cadbury had big aspirations when it came to fair trade, as their former CEO proudly stated in the interview. Our goal is ultimately to have all of our chocolate bars be fair trade. Pure Dairy Milk carries the fair trade logo, but many of the spin-off bars that are prominently branded dairy milk are not fair trade. OK, it's not a bar, but even the dairy milk Easter egg is not fair trade. And now other big chocolate companies are seizing the initiative. Mars, Ferrero and Hershey's have made pledges to purchase cocoa from only sustainable sources by 2020. Mondelez haven't made any such commitment, but have launched their own sustainability program, Coco Life. They've invested $400 million in the project, and the glossy marketing hits all the right notes. Current fair trade certification requires all the main ingredients, cocoa, sugar, nuts and the like, to be responsibly sourced. But under Mondelez's Coco Life scheme, only the cocoa itself will have to meet the standards. So who's got room for one more promise? In a section of the Mondelez website entitled Our Dream, Belief and Values, they claim we believe that complexity crushes the human spirit and that simplicity is the essence of speed, so we keep it simple. Simple sounds good. Let's try the tax fudge. I've looked at a number of sets of accounts in my time and Mondelez really does take the chocolate bar. It is enormously complicated. Uh, 56 subsidiaries in the United Kingdom alone. In fact, according to their 2014 accounts, Cadbury and Mondelez are part of a 230 company group worldwide. So next time you wolf down a bar of Cadbury, it's worth taking a look at the tiny print on the back of the packaging. It says here, made under licence from Cadbury UK Limited. So a bar of Cadbury dairy milk made under licence from Cadbury. Cadbury UK Limited is the trademark owner. It receives all this trademark income from all around the world and the UK. It pays dividends to Kraft Foods UK, which pays dividends to Kraft Foods Investments, which pays dividends to Vantis, which borrows 2.2 billion. It also pays dividends to Mondelez UK. But the result of this money go round is simple. How much did Mondelez UK Limited pay in corporation tax on the sales of their chocolate? Not a button. The infrastructure that Cadbury relies upon when it manufactures in the United Kingdom is paid for out of tax revenues, and Cadbury is not paying its share. But what should they have paid? Dispatches has had a closer look at Mondelez and their UK subsidiaries. Using the most recent published accounts, we analysed turnover, profit, tax, assets and UK employees and we estimate that their complex company structure enabled the avoidance of up to £24 million worth of tax in the UK in a single year. Mondelez told us Cadbury remains the biggest purchaser of fair trade cocoa in the UK. Our commitment now includes all our hot chocolate drinking products, Cadbury Dairy Milk Buttons, Giant Buttons and Cadbury Dairy Milk Bubbly. We have also extended our relationship with fair trade as part of Cocoa Life a long-term $400 million investment which aims to improve the lives and communities of 200,000 cocoa farmers by 2022. And on tax, they said, we do not recognise the figures cited in this programme. We pay corporation tax based on the laws of the countries in which we operate. We comply with all applicable tax legislation in the UK. 
So, six years after Mondelez took over Cadbury, after all the anger and recriminations, the report card is mixed. They have kept some of their promises. And some of our favourite chocolate brands are still produced in this iconic Bourneville factory. But their tax arrangements, the job cuts, the changes in production leave a bitter aftertaste. And whatever happens next, Mondelez should know that the British public don't like it when the big boys mess with our chocolate. And Dispatches returns in two weeks' time here on 4.